All right, so let's now let's look at the eyes. The eyes are the organ of sight, right? Uh, so before we get into talking about the eye itself, let's look at some visual accessory organs. So first is the eyelid. So right there is the eyelid. Um, my pen over here. So there's the eyelid. Uh, this is a protective covering in the eye, right? Uh, on the inside layer of that eyelid is a mucous membrane called conjunctiva. So conjunctiva is a mucous membrane that lines the inner surface of the eyelid. It also comes back a little bit over our sclera, which is our white portion of our eye. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, if you get a conjunctivitis, that's an inflammation in the conjunctiva, like pink eyes uh, type of conjunctivitis. All right. Next are lacrimal glands. So you can see the location of lacrimal glands, lacrimal glands here. So they are superior and lateral to our eyes. Now our lacrimal glands are glands that secrete tears. Now they constantly produce tears and this arrow shows you the direction in which those tears move. They wash across our eye and then they drain out of our eye down and they actually end up into our nasal cavity. So that's where we constantly produce tears. They constantly wash over our eyes. They constantly drain into our nasal cavity. From our nasal cavity, they move to our pharynx and then I just swallowed some tears along with some mucus. Anyway. So this is why, uh, you know, uh, you know, if when you cry, you might notice that your nose gets stuffy as well, and that's due to the all the tears being drained into your nasal cavity. All right. Now tears have two functions. They have a uh, they lubricate the eye and the eyelids, and they also have a cleaning function. So they constantly are washing across, cleaning out our eye. They also contain an enzyme called lysozyme, uh, which is an antibacterial agent. Okay. Let's move on to the extrinsic eye muscles. So the extrinsic eye muscles are the six muscles that move the eye. So we have one top, bottom, each side, and then we have a couple of these oblique or angled uh, muscles that help move the eye as well. All right, now let's look at the uh, structure of the eye. So there are three layers to the eye. So we have one, two, three layers to the uh, uh, wall of the eye. Uh, so the first layer is known as the fibrous tunic. So that's shown here in white and this whitish up front. So the fibrous tunic, uh, the front part of that fibrous tunic is known as the cornea. So the cornea is the anterior transparent bulge in the front of the eye, and it's going to help focus incoming light rays. So there's the cornea again. All right. The white portion of our eye is called the sclera. So, uh, it's made of collagenous and elastic fibers. That's what gives it its color. And it's gonna protect the inner parts of the eye. Uh, it is a tough fibrous connective tissue covering. And as I mentioned with tough fibrous connective tissue coverings, they're gonna protect the um, uh, inner parts of an organ. So uh, next, uh, it also serves as uh, an attachment site for those extrinsic eye muscles. The next layer, which you see kind of this dark layer there, that is uh, the vascular tunic. And so as we move to the front, it gets a little larger up there. So uh, the vascular tunic in the back of the eye, that is the choroid right there. So the choroid is this vascular pigmented middle layer of the wall of the eye. Uh, it has many blood vessels, that's what vascular eyes means. And it's uh, pigmented, it contains a lot of melanocytes. Uh, and so those melanocytes produce melanin, and that melanin in there is what it does is it absorbs excess light that gets into the eye. If we follow this around to the front of the eye, we get to this structure right there, and that is known as the ciliary body. So this is an internal ring around the front of the eye. So you see it there, you see it there. It wraps around the lens. Those are the lens there. This picture is showing the lens and the ciliary body around it. Okay, uh, it contains ciliary muscles, which uh, you're seeing there, ciliary muscles. Um, so ciliary muscles, uh, they're going to help change the shape of the lens. Okay, uh, and then if I go back to this picture here, the ciliary body also produces aqueous humor. And this is a watery fluid that fills, nourishes, and maintains the shape of the front of the eye. So it fills in all this area, that aqueous humor. So aqueous means watery, humor means fluid, watery fluid. Okay, let's take a look at the lens. There is the lens right there. So this is a clear uh, membrane-like structure that condenses and focuses light on the retina. Uh, and it is composed of intercellular materials, so stuff between cells. 
uh, and it can change shape due to those ciliary muscles. And this process is called accommodation. So if I go to this picture here, you can see this. So accommodation is adjustment of the lens for close or distant vision. So this is showing distant vision, like looking at a tree far away. What happens here is our lens flattens out for that distant vision, all right? And that helps get that image onto our retina, or the part of our eye that we see, okay? Uh, if we look at something up close, though, what we do is we cause that lens to thicken up. So our lens thickens up for that uh, um, uh, close vision. So the thing about this is, is as we age, just like everything else in our body, uh, our lens will lose elasticity. So it loses its ability to flatten uh, or to, to thicken up like it used to. And that's why a lot of us, as we age, will need those reading glasses so we can see stuff closer up. All right. All right, next is the uh, iris. So if I go back to uh, this picture here, uh, this right there is the iris. So the iris is a thin diaphragm that is the colored portion of the eye. And so a diaphragm uh, regulates how much uh, 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 light enters an object, in this case, how much light enters the eye. So right in the middle of the iris, the colored portion of our eye, uh, is our pupil. And so this is a circular opening in the center of the eye or in the center of the pupil. It looks black uh, because there's no light in our eye. Our eye back behind here is just a cavity and there's no light back there. So the pupil looks black because there's no light there. It's like looking into a cave. A cave opening looks black because there's no light inside the cave. All right. Now, there are two sets of muscles in the iris that control the pupil size. So if we go to uh, this picture here, so this is showing these two sets. So we have an inner set and an outer set. So that inner set is known as the uh, circular set. And so when the circular set contracts, well, it's gonna make that pupil size uh, opening smaller, all right? So that you're gonna see that construction there. This is controlled by our parasympathetic division of our autonomic nervous system. And this typically occurs when we move, uh, walk into an area that has a lot of light. So outside on a nice sunny day or a room that has a lot of light in it, like a room such as the one I'm in right now. Next are the radial set. So these out here are the radial set. Now these muscle fibers move in this direction. So when these guys contract, they're gonna move in this direction. So, so when these contract, uh, the pupil dilates or gets larger, okay? So uh, this is controlled by our sympathetic division of our autonomic nervous system. Uh, and this occurs typically when we move into a low light situation. So moving into a darkened room or you know, even a cave, okay? So now I do sh should point out when our circular set is contracting, the radial set is relaxed. When our radial set is contracting, our circular set is relaxed. So they uh, contract opposite of each other. That multi-unit smooth muscle, which I talked about before. Now, we can also have uh, constriction and dilation occur in other instances. So if you find that something appealing or you're problem solving, your eyes are gonna dilate. This in fact occurs when you're looking at somebody who you find attractive, your eyes will dilate during that time period. If you're bored or repulsed, uh, your eyes will constrict. So other things that you're not totally in control. All right. Now back to that iris color. So there's the, the iris again. Now let's look at its color. Its color is due to the amount of melanin that's found in the iris and also the density of the iris tissue. So it's kind of simple, like if we have uh, brown to black eyes, you just have produce a lot of melanin in those. So, you know, uh, and then it's just melanin levels that determine all the rest of these. So blue eyes have very little melanin production. Uh, you get more melanin production, you get green, you get more melanin production than that, you get hazel, you get more than that, you get light brown, then dark brown, then black. So it's just a continuation there, right? All right, and then uh, the denser the iris tissue, uh, the grayer the eye will look. Now I do wanna point out something, uh, eye color, like skin color, like hair color, these are uh, polygenic traits. So poly, many genetic genes. Many genes control these traits. So that's what we see with them. So, you know, if you're, you know, one parent has brown eyes and the other parent has blue eyes, I mean, that doesn't relegate you to having brown or blue eyes. 
uh, you know, you can have any shade in between the two as well.